Well, good morning, everyone. I am David with Vallombrosa Online, and we're pleased uh, to let you all know about an upcoming retreat this Saturday entitled Christ, Our Model of Prayer with Father Brian Malady. Father Brian Malady is a, um, a son of an Air Force officer and was raised throughout the United States. He entered the Dominican Order in 1966 and was ordained in Oakland, California in 1972. He has been a parish priest, high school teacher, retreat master, mission preacher, and university professor. Um, this Saturday, he'll be hosting, uh, along with myself and Valambrosa Online, uh, a one-day virtual retreat uh, using the life of our Lord as a basis to explain the various characteristics of Christian prayer, uh, entitled, of course, Christ, our model of prayer. And Father, uh, if you'd like to let people know what they can hope to uh, learn during this retreat. All right, thank you very much, David. And hello, dear brothers and sisters. The retreat will be oriented toward, first of all, trying to explain who Christ is and applying this to his birth, to his death, and to his resurrection. There are many, many strange ideas about Christ today. And I wanted to try to correct the record on those regarding the uh, way of life that Christ lived and the mysteries, especially things like the mysteries of the rosary. After all, we are in the month of October. And this seemed especially fitting when I wished to apply it to the whole idea of growth in Christian prayer. And so what I want to do is use Christ's birth or his entrance into the world to begin to discuss how we begin our life of prayer. And that beginning is normally characterized by what spiritual writers call detachment. Uh, after all, the Lord himself gave you know, the glory of his divinity. You could say, though he was in the form of God, he didn't look on this as something to be grasped at, but he ex exhibited detachment in the most beautiful way by giving up the glory of his divinity in order to basically participate in this human life we have here on earth with an aim to dying on the cross for us and saving us from sin. Once I discuss the nature of detachment and how important it is for the beginnings of Christian prayer, then using Christ's life uh, on earth and also his death, I want to try to show just what's involved in the progress which we experience in prayer, and that's often characterized in Christian history by things that the Carmelites would call the dark nights of the soul. And I'd like to try to connect those with the passion in some way, how they're like and unlike that. And you remember that Jesus went apart also to pray. Now, the issue is that Jesus have to have special times of prayer like we do, like a retreat. Well, Jesus, as I'm going to try to show you, always lived a life of intense contemplation with his Father. So he didn't really have to go aside for himself. But Christ does everything for us as an example to us. And so he wanted to demonstrate to us that if we live a very active life in the world, and of course Christ lived a very active life in the world, he didn't withdraw to a monastery. If we live a very active life in the world that we know need to go aside, and focus our attention constantly on the Lord in times of prayer. So this will basically form the, the structure of the second talk. And then I wanna use Christ's resurrection and his ascension into heaven and his exaltation in glory as an occasion to also begin to discuss what the final capstone of Christian prayer is here on earth. Now that would normally be called the transforming union or the mystical marriage. And Jesus is of course our divine bridegroom. He marries the church. And since we're all members of the church, I know this is sometimes a difficult image to work. We have to say in a certain sense that because he's giving us life through grace and the whole purpose of grace is to experience a loving exchange of hearts with the triune God, the Trinitarian God, in other words, to live on earth as though we were already in heaven, in eternity, 
to know as God loves, knows and love as God loves, then using his resurrection and ascension as a background as the father perfect man will finally be realized is perfectly fitting for us to try to experience growth and grace. You know, today in our society, it's almost like a crisis, a huge crisis. And to think that this crisis sort of came down just in the last year, it was so swift that many of us didn't see it coming. A part of this crisis is the secularization of our country and actually a good bit of the world in general where religion isn't considered that vital, and if at all. And in some cases, this could include a kind of, what would you call it, reimagining, I guess that's the word they use now, of who Jesus is in a way away from what the Gospels portray him to be. Now, if we're going to root our prayer life in our doctrine, and I think that rooting is extremely important, then we have to understand our doctrine and and try to see how our progress in prayer, our growth in prayer, our spiritual maturity can be reflected in what we actually teach about our Lord. So I'd like this retreat to be a time when in the midst of all this crisis, we do need spiritual refreshment. You know, there are lots of people, not everybody of course, but lots of even healthcare experts who claim or say that the lockdowns they may have uh, limited our physical disease, but they've caused a great deal of spiritual harm, what we would call spiritual harm in our population, psychologically and in other ways. Suicide rates are up, abuse of children is up, and all those things. So we really need to approach this. I mean, we have our things that the government requires us to do physically, but our basic way of addressing this issue in this fullest sense of the word should be spiritual. And if we can develop a spiritual life where we have our Lord in the secret cloister of our hearts, if we can be what St. Clary used to call a mirror of eternity in the midst of all these difficulties in time, then this will not make us necessarily less stressful in a certain sense, but it will make us more able to see the distress from the standpoint of the cross, and something that also should help us to experience a greater maturity. I've recently been reading of religious communities that are, of course, suffering financially, as many of you are, through these lockdowns, but have looked on the lockdown as somewhat of a blessing because it's made them refocus their attention on the primacy of their spiritual life. Obviously, we can't go anywhere or we have very little ability to go anywhere. So that leads us back to trying to develop the interior life. So I would encourage you to look on this opportunity as a means not only to deal with the difficulties of our present age. I mean, all ages have had great difficulties. When you think of it, you know, St. Augustine was dying in Hippo as the vandals were besieging the city and they eventually would sack the city after his death and destroy it. Uh, and yet, oddly enough, when St. Augustine was dying, he had the words of Psalms painted all over his room where he was dying, so you can meditate on the glory of the Lord in the Psalms. So in the midst of this distressful time, we have to remember, this isn't the first time in history when people have experienced great distress. But in some ways, because of the materialism of our culture, we don't think about the spiritual cure as that important. Well, we need to put it right at the center of our souls again. Of course, always respecting all the other things too. So let me encourage you to join this retreat this weekend. At the end of the third talk, I will have some time for questions you'd like to ask about our doctrine and all so the spiritual life. And I want to encourage you to get in really deep in your soul and realize that you need to shut out the noise of the world in order to experience the peace and silence of God. You know, it's not by accident that in the Holy Scriptures, in the Old Testament, they constantly say, hear, hear, O Israel, hear, because the noise of our world, the noise of our concupiscence, the noise of our lack of detachment, the noise of our fears, 
of our disordered loves and all those things suffocates our ability to sit in silence and listen to Christ's voice. So I'd like to encourage you to come and hear Christ's voice again. Thank you so much, Father. And if you want to sign up, Valombrosa, V-A-L-L-O-M-B-R-O-S-A dot O-R-G slash calendar. And there you will scroll down and see this weekend's retreat, Christ, Our Model of Prayer with Father Brian Malady. And uh, we look forward to having you become part of it. And uh, it's going to be a, a wonderful uh, time of reflection and growth for all of us. So thank you again, Father. Great. And we should remind them it begins at 10 a.m. Yes. yes, 10 a.m. Pacific time. And there will be recording available for people who cannot attend. Right, and, and there are three talks that will end about 2.45 or 3 in the afternoon. So Correct. Time for reflection and eating and all that between the talks. <laughs> all the other important stuff. Thank you so much, Father.